Hello everyone, my name is Scotty Emmert. For the past seven months, I've been studying congenital hydrocephalus, a big word for the buildup of fluid on the brain at birth. When I first joined the lab in January, my mentor proposed to me an outrageous idea, manipulating the rat genome, the molecular code that provides the blueprint for every organism on earth, to transform perfectly healthy rat embryos into rat babies with severe hydrocephalus. To do so, I would have to master a groundbreaking technology known as CRISPR, the genome engineering platform that is sweeping the scientific community as an easy and efficient way to change the genetic makeup of nearly any organism. Understanding and applying the science behind CRISPR to my research project proved to be the most challenging intellectual endeavor of my entire life. I became so obsessed with learning the technicalities of CRISPR that I failed to comprehend the ethical implications of my project. The same platform that I was using to edit the DNA of rats could be used to manipulate the human genome. So what exactly is CRISPR? Clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats are segments of DNA found throughout the genetic code that, when paired with CRISPR-associated or Cas genes, serve as an immune system that helps bacteria fight off viruses and other invaders. In 2012, two scientists named Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dudna discovered that a CRISPR molecule associated with proteins made by the Cas9 gene could be used as the most accurate and reliable way to edit DNA. The CRISPR-Cas9 molecule searches for a specific sequence of DNA, unzips the twisted DNA strands, and cuts out the targeted sequence like a pair of molecular scissors. Then, the body can either repair itself on its own, or scientists can patch in their own sequence. Since our genetic code carries the blueprint for who we are, this means that CRISPR can be used to turn off mutated genes that cause deadly diseases like cancer, or even to activate a region of our genome that determines physical traits like height or eye color. And if these edits are done inside an egg, sperm, or embryonic cell, this technology will permanently alter the inheritance of a particular gene in entire populations. In the four short years since the CRISPR platform was first introduced, scientists have employed the technology to design biofuel-producing yeast strains, engineer anti-browning mushrooms, and cut out HIV from human cells and living animals. Next month, scientists in China will use CRISPR-Cas9 for the first time in humans injecting lung cancer patients with immune cells genetically modified to destroy malignant tumors. A proposal to run a similar study in the U.S. has already received approval by a federal ethics and safety panel, and will likely receive the regulatory go-ahead by the end of this year. You may be wondering how a technology capable of doing so much good could make me question the ethics of using it. The sobering truth is that the only limiting factor in CRISPR is our imagination. CRISPR has infiltrated the scientific community so quickly that international regulatory committees have yet to establish formal limitations on its use in human subject research. The U.S. has no laws governing this type of research done on human embryos with private money, meaning that commercial fertility clinics, which have both the funding and equipment to edit human embryos with CRISPR, could begin advertising services promising designer babies born with favorable traits. The same ethical issues that I faced after using CRISPR in my own research are now prompting scientists to develop appropriate limits and guidelines. Jennifer Dudna, co-creator of the CRISPR-Cas9 system, has hosted multiple summits to discuss CRISPR's potential impact and ethical repercussions on society. Such meetings have led biomedical researchers of the National Academy of Sciences to voluntarily refrain from using CRISPR to permanently edit DNA in the human germline for pregnancies or treatments. Even bioethicists closer to home just across the street, actually, are raising awareness about the CRISPR system. Dr. Jennifer Bard, Dean and Nibber Professor of our very own College of Law, is an internationally recognized expert on bioethics and public health. Also a professor of the College of Medicine, she will be teaching a class on the legal implications of human subject research, paying particular focus to the CRISPR platform. I think the dividing line is between one baby and making a change in the human genome forever. And I think that's really where the ethical and line is. I think everyone would like to be able to fight disease by, um, by altering the genes that cause it. But the question is, what are the unintended consequences for the future? This is likely to be a big source of uh, legal work and legal thinking um, for many years to come. How will this look in the future? that we did this now? Will, will we think that the people who did this now were irresponsible and rushed in too quickly? As the genome editing kinks in CRISPR are worked out and formal regulation on using it to treat humans are put in place, you will undoubtedly encounter this technology again. In the news, your community, or possibly as a way to cure previously untreatable diseases in you or your loved ones. 
Imagine your own children growing up and interacting with genetically modified kids predisposed to higher intelligence, athleticism, or physical attractiveness. Do the medical applications of CRISPR justify lenient regulation that could allow for the creation of designer babies? Ask yourself these difficult questions, because CRISPR is rapidly blurring the lines between science fiction and reality.